Good morning and welcome to our live stream today. Glad that you're able to join in. Sorry for a bit of a delay, just ran into a bit of an issue, but have that all sorted out now. But uh, thankful that we get to join one another this Saturday morning and to be encouraged in the word once again. And I trust that you all had a good week and uh, recovered from time change. You know, the first week after time change is a bit rough and the first few nights you're kind of wondering why you're all falling asleep so early, but we should all have it sorted out by now. And uh, uh, this morning, as we continue uh, just considering some things on Missions Month, this month as we do our Saturday devotionals, I kind of wanted to keep our focus on missions and really how it personally applies to us uh, as individual believers right here in our own homes and uh, in our own uh, communities, sorry, I should say. And um, this morning, I want to consider a very familiar verse, especially during uh, conference times, Matthew 28. So if you have your Bibles, we'll be there this morning, Matthew 28. And really, it's a passage that would be considered one of the first calls of uh missions one of the calls of the great commission that jesus christ gave to his disciples and passed on to all believers as well so this morning matthew 28 and we'll read verses 18 to 20. and the bible says and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So here in this verse, there's a few words I want to point out. And um, for example, in verse 18, it talks about when Jesus Christ saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then in verse number 20, it says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So we have all these different words, and I want to kind of focus on some of these words because uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and there's a reason he uses different things. And um, as you study some words in the, the Greek New Testament, there, there wasn't a translation specifically for English, so there would be multiple uh, Greek words, and the world is one of those examples. So for example... In John 3 16 for God so loved the world that world is a different world than we see here in verse 20 but that world is cosmos and it means people for God so loved the world he's talking about the people but then we also see in first John it says love not the world well why does it say love not the world where it says God so loved the world well when it says love not the world as a believer the word cosmos is translated as the world system. We are not supposed to love uh, the world system, its beliefs, its uh, ways of living, its sinful lifestyle. Or another example in Romans 12 verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to the world. Here's another word. But that time, this, world, this wor word world is translated as ion, and that really means present time, or age and that's the idea of the spiritual or moral characteristic of the world we are not to conform to the present day and the moral characteristic or the spiritual uh, climate of the day we're not to conform to that so when we read here in Matthew 28 and verse 18 where it says all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth that word is translated yea and it's Speaking of the physical world, geographical, it's talking about land. But now we come to verse number 20, where Christ says, I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So this world, word world is translated as ion. So it's the same word that we would get the modern English word for eons, which means in an indefinite amount of time a very long period of time so when we read this passage which we read so often speaking of this great commission teaching all nations baptizing them and the the power that christ has sent us with here he speaks about not leaving us he says i am with you always even until the end of the world and that's a comforting verse 
But when it speaks of being with us to the end of the world, this is not speaking of a geographical location. While, while in that context of, yes, wherever we go, Jesus Christ is with us, wherever we, wherever we physically go. And that is a great comfort to us. And that is a truth that we know that God is always with us no matter where we go. But in this passage specifically, it's speaking about time-wise. So he is with us unto the end of the world or unto the end of the age. It's speaking of how long he will stay with us and how long this power is given to us. So this command that we see here in Matthew isn't just to the, to the disciples, which some people might say, well, we don't have a responsibility. That was given to the disciples. Or this wasn't a command just for the early church, where some people say, well, that was just given to the early church until the Spirit had been given. No, this promise that we read here in Matthew 28 is an unfailing promise that is given to us till the very end. It's very important that we understand these words. So this isn't determined, this promise isn't determined on how bad things get in the world or get in your life. God's promise is still true today, and it will be true tomorrow. So this verse is as real as it was the day when he spoke it to his disciples, because he says, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth, physically here. So physically, no matter where you go, my power is given unto you. But he also says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, or unto the end of the age. So until God calls us home until Jesus Christ raptures up his believers. He is with us here to help us, to give us that power to go and to teach others and to preach and to share the gospel with those that we love. You know, sometimes in life, we feel like we're barely holding on. I don't know if you've ever felt like that before. You're just grasping for solid ground. But when you think about the truth that God has given to us, when he, he, he commands us to go and to reach others and to share the gospel. When you think about that aspect of our life and the responsibility that we're given, you know, we as Christians, as believers, aren't supposed to be holding on. But as we're going, we're going in the power of the Lord and we're going forward. Matthew 16, 18, it says, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ is saying, I'm building, this is my church, and I'm building it. And he says, even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, this isn't speaking of attacks upon us and them prevailing over us. It says, no, the gates of hell, as we move forward and serve and reach others, hell isn't going to prevail against us. No matter what we face in this world, God is with us, and we can move forward and reach others with Christ. It's his church, and he's building it, not us. In that verse that I just read in Matthew 16, 18, where it says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. This rock that he's building it upon is not speaking of Peter. Peter is not the rock. If you're the study out the name Peter, or what Christ also named him, Cephas, which literally means a stone, Peter is also, uh, if you translate it as Petros, which means a small stone or pebble. So Christ is here in this verse is saying, Thou art Peter, thou art a small stone, thou art a pebble. But he says, upon this rock, speaking of, of himself, Petra, which really means a bedrock, a large mass of rock. I don't know if you know of the ancient... A city that they found in Jordan called Petra, but it's a it's a this huge city that's built into the side of a mountain in Jordan and right into the bedrock, carved into the stone. And this is the idea that Christ is speaking of as he compares Peter. He says, "Thou art pebble, thou art small, but I am the rock." Jesus Christ is a rock, a fortress. Psalm eighteen two says, "The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer." My God, my strength, and whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. So he is a rock, but he is a foundation. 
1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So Christ, he has empowered the church. He is the rock that is built upon. And he has sent us and he has given us power in heaven and in earth. That, or the power that he has in heaven and earth has sent us to go and to reach others. And while we might be discouraged about the days that we're living in and maybe what's happening in our life, God's promise doesn't fail. It doesn't stop because of what's happening in our life. But rather, he says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world or the present age. He will be with us until the end. So that isn't given to us with stipulations saying, well, it depends on how the things in the world are going or what's happening with COVID. No, he says, I am with you always, no matter what, no matter what age, until the very end and to whoever this applies to. So it wasn't to the, just the disciples or to the early church, or it's not just the missionaries who are going out into the world and to far distant places, because this isn't talking geographically. This is speaking age-wise, and it is applied to all of us. So this call to missions isn't just to people going out, raising support, and starting churches, and building buildings, and helping people in different parts of the world, but rather it's each and every one of us as believers that we need to go and we need to tell other people, but not in our own strength, but in the power that Christ has given to us and the comfort they'll know that he is with us as well. So I trust that you'll take this challenge, that you will not forget the responsibility that we have as a believer as we go into every day of our life, including today, to reach other people with the gospel. So I hope that's been a challenge to you. As far as announcements, uh, not much, uh, but we're excited about church tomorrow, and I hope that you'll join us. And tomorrow for our missions month, we have missionaries with us. We have the littles with us and they're joining us tomorrow, sharing uh, some changes that are happening in their ministry. We're excited to see them. We're excited to support them and to hear from them. So be out tomorrow. They'll be with us all day. So join us tomorrow at nine o'clock and then 5 p.m. as well. And then of course, 5 p.m. we have kids church and we're excited about that as well. So we'd love to see your children join us tomorrow at church. There's something for everyone and we hope that you'll be there and not to only hear from God and from the word, but to encourage one another as believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ as well. So I trust that you'll enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, and we will see you tomorrow. So God bless now. Bye.